Hello, this is Patrick with Urban Carry Holsters, and today we're going to be doing a full field strip and cleaning of the Kimber Solo 9. The Kimber Solo 9 was Kimber's answer to the pocket pistol in 9mm craze, and they did a great job of designing it. It's an all metal firearm, so you have a stainless steel slide and barrel, and then an alloy in the frame. There's no polymer on this firearm. There are a couple interesting notes about the gun, though. Uh, mainly that Kimber designed the firearm to work exclusively with 124 grain ammunition and that they recommend replacing the recoil spring after about a thousand rounds. We'll get into some more details later, but for now we're going to turn it over to Chase for the cleaning portion of the video. We're going to show you how to do a field strip and a proper cleaning of the Kimber Solo. Of course what we want to do first is make sure that the gun is clear and safe before we're, you know, taking it apart. Don't want to have any kind of misfires but want to eject the magazine, no rounds in the magazine, and open up that slide, and there are no rounds in the gun itself. So with the Kimber Solo, it kind of is also similar to, uh, if you're familiar with the 1911 uh, uh, style pistol, um, it does not have any kind of bushing or anything. Your slide catch is the takedown pin. So what you need to do is you need to, there's a little little groove right behind where the slide catch uh, mark is, okay? It's very slight, but you're gonna try and bring that in line with the back of your slide catch, okay? That way there's a little nub in here that needs to push through, through that. Now, when you're pushing through, you just push on this pin from the other side, okay? There's that pin right there. And what you do is, yeah, like I said, line up that back of that slide catch so that you can push and then, ah, oh, there we go. Just pull it right out. After that, okay, you will have to depress the trigger in order to take the slide off. So point in a safe direction, depress that trigger and your slide and your frame will come apart. What you do next, take out your recoil spring, okay, and your guide rod. It is compounded, all right, so you don't have to worry about it flying really anywhere. Then, of course, lift up from the ejection port of your gun to bring the barrel out, and you just bring it out at a slight angle. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take some gun cleaning agent, uh, I'm using Hoppy's Elite, and we're gonna coat the barrel, okay? Uh, how I do this is you could use, you know, one of these leads, and you know of course a cotton swab but what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use my brush okay it just makes it a lot simpler i don't have to have two cleaning rods in order to do it um, but all you do is you take your cleaning swab and you wrap your brush in it now uh, this uh, hobby's uh, gun cleaner it the reason why we want to put this in the barrel beforehand is because you know you want it to sit in there uh, what it does is it'll start breaking down any of that powder fouling and any of that copper that's in there. Again, you don't need to use very much, okay? And I'm gonna go through the bore side of the barrel, not the muzzle, okay? This, again, this is a type of gun that's not really made for accuracy, but you still wanna try and keep that accuracy up. And if you were to use a metal cleaning rod like I am now, well, this is brass, but, so it's a little bit softer, but you don't wanna nick that crown. Okay, again, it'll just hurt your accuracy in the long run. But we're gonna go ahead and just give that barrel a nice little coat of that gun cleaning. Now, what also I wanna do is there's still a little bit on here. I just wanna polish off that feed ramp, okay? Which is this right here. This, if you don't do, it'll gunk up. And of course, your rounds will not engage properly. So now that the barrel's done, we're gonna let that sit. Next thing we're gonna do is work on the slide. Again, we're gonna use some of this gun cleaner because a lot of that powder fouling and everything will blow back into your firearm. So areas of high friction, like your slide grooves, um, even where the barrel meets the slide, and then also where your bolt face. This is another area where a lot of that powder and a lot of that uh, brass and copper will start adhering to your gun. So. What I use is just 
a nylon brush. That's really all you need. Uh, you can even use a toothbrush, even. They work just the same. Uh, but I'm going to put a little bit of that Poppy's gun cleaner on there and just address these slides. I'll address these uh, slide grooves. Okay. And get a little bit underneath the bolt. And then I'm also going to get my bolt face. Okay. I'm going to turn the gun upside down. That way, none of the solution gets inside the striker fire system. Okay. But this is also uh, to get your extractor. Okay. If uh, that gets all gunked up, you're going to have your cartridges not ejecting properly. So just give that a good little scrubbing. Now, also, this firearm, uh, it has an interesting style barrel. Uh, when it is in battery, there's these little grooves right here that match up inside the slide. Um, this will be another good area to just kind of go over, okay, on the barrel and also in the slide itself. And we're, of course, going to let that sit. Also, try and get some on your recoil spring. Okay, this is again where powder buildup will happen. So we're just gonna coat that a little bit, let it all sit. Then we're gonna move on to the frame. Now, same thing I did with the barrel and the slide. You're gonna use a little bit of gun cleaner and hit these slide rails as well as uh, certain metal pieces inside the frame. Now, uh, some people will use oil. Now, it's not entirely the best decision to use a bunch of oil on your gun. Uh, oil will attract a lot of that powder and a lot of that dirt. And it'll end up making it uh, so you have to clean your gun more and more often. Um, that's why we just use a little bit of gun cleaner. And towards the end, uh, what we'll do is we'll add a slight bit of oil just for lubricity, even though it's probably not going to be that necessary. But that's pretty much all you need to do in the sense of cleaning. Now, um, I try to mention this in a lot of videos. Not only do you need to clean your gun, but you also need to clean your magazine. Of course, this is where your rounds are, and these are in close proximity to where the explosion happens in your gun. So a lot of that powder could come back down into your magazine. So it is important to try and always clean these. Uh, this is very simple. It has a little... Uh, punch in area, the little pin, you just need to punch in and then move the bottom of the magazine towards the front of the magazine. Now keep your thumb over it, okay, just in case, but there is a little buffer pad, all right, that acts as a little shield and that you just slide forward like so and it's, it really is not that difficult. But take your spring out and you won't, you don't really need to worry so much about your follower. These things can sometimes be a pain to get out as I'm having trouble with it right now, just getting it in the back to its rightful position. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean out the inside of my mag. And I will use this other cleaning rod just for the heck of it. I mean, you can use a brush again. Um, you can use Q-tips. Um, they have more like rifle or AR style Q-tips that you can get. That'll also help clean it. But again, just a little bit of that cleaning agent. Go ahead and wipe down the inside of your mag. Now, as you can see, that was all inside the magazine, okay? This is why you do want to try and clean your mag, not every time that you go shooting, but as often as you can. All right, but we're going to put this thing back together. Okay, we're just going to go in the same order of how we took it out. So spring will go in. On these mags, there is a little lip, okay? So uh, when you put your uh, spring in, you don't exactly have to hold it down. I just recess it onto one of those lips. 
Take that little pad, start it the same way that you took it out. Then, the bottom of the magazine, of course, press down a little bit on that pad so you can get inside those grooves. And then make sure that it clicks right back into place. Okay, your magazine is now done, all right? But as you could see from how much dirt came out of there and uh, different and powder fouling, it is important to do that. So now that we've had that cleaning agent sitting on, on the barrel and on the slide and frame, we're gonna wipe that excess off, okay? First, what I'm gonna do is a lot of that uh, powder should be ready to be taken off, okay? It's been, of course, uh, eating away at that powder. So we're just gonna swab this out a couple of times. Again, I'm going in through the bore side, all right? And not the, and not the muzzle. All right, but of course, you don't need to do this too many times, especially if you do clean your firearm often. Um, but if you do not clean your firearm often, you do want to repeat these steps for cleaning your barrel and cleaning your slide because um, a lot of that powder could be really caked on there and you'll need to be able to get it off. But of course, you don't want to uh, damage your gun, so it's just good to do it in small, small sessions. But go ahead and wipe the barrel down and again see that's all that that crud inside the barrel and from what I can see the barrel is looking quite clean now so now that we've done that we're gonna wipe off the excess on our slide as well uh, you can use of course another clean pad um, an old rag if you wanted to, or these kind of Q-tips. Um, I'm gonna use these Q-tips because uh, my <laughs> fingers won't be able to fit inside this gun. It's a little too small for, for them to fit in there. But again, address those slide grooves. Where I mentioned where the barrel recesses in. And as you can see, all that stuff is getting lifted off of there. Also, go over our bolt face, which we cleaned earlier. Try and get behind that extractor. And now your slide is good to go. I will use one of these little swab pads to just wipe off the excess from the recoil spring and as well from the frame. Okay, This I can actually get a finger in here. Just go over everywhere that I paid attention to. The slide rails. And your gun is now clean. Well, at least relatively, as you can see, I'm c continually lifting some of that excess powder and unspent powder out of this gun. But it is now relatively clean. So this is where I would use a little bit of oil. Um, I don't, of course, use a lot. It's really not necessary. And again, it'll just attract more dirt and attract more of that powder. So I just use just a little spray Okay, just the coat. Just give that all the metal pieces just a slight little coating, uh, of course, uh, just to protect, just to protect the firearm. Get inside those slide rails again, little side grooves. Just to add a little bit of lubricity and to protect the firearm a little bit. Again, any point of friction, like where the barrel meets the slide, side grooves, all that. Just give it a nice little coating. Including the frame. And your gun 
is now clean and ready to be put back together. All right, so what we're gonna do is just go in reverse. And I insert my barrel at an angle. Make sure I push it back. Make sure it's recessed properly. Go ahead and put your recoil spring back in. Like this, just insert it right into below the barrel where it has the space for. Push in and let it sit right on that barrel lug. All right, next, we just need to put our slide and frame back together. So find those slide rails and find those grooves. Make sure that it goes on straight and proper. Okay. But yeah, this is where it's gonna be a little bit difficult. So just bring your slide back to that little notch. Okay. Insert your takedown pin and then let your slide forward. All right, now your gun is properly cleaned and ready for you to carry or take back out to the range. Thanks, Chase. Now we're gonna go into some additional details about the Kimber Solo 9. We're gonna start up top with the sights. You've got your standard three dot sights here, but they are rounded off so it's nice and sleek and they're not gonna get caught up on anything like your clothing or a holster. Moving into the slide, you've got a rounded slide here and it's very smooth in its action. The slide serrations here aren't very aggressive, but you can still get a pretty good pull on it. The barrel is a bell-shaped barrel. And you can see that's an interesting shaped barrel there, and you would have seen that in the cleaning portion of the video. And then moving down into the frame, you've also got a metal frame here as well. It's not made from stainless steel, but aluminum alloy. You also have your ambidextrous magazine release here and an ambidextrous thumb safety on the firearm as well. This makes it great for right or left-handed shooters. And you can see here the trigger guard is large enough to get a gloved finger into. You've got plenty of room there. The trigger is very smooth, as are most Kimber firearms. It's a great trigger system. There you go. And the reset is pretty subtle. It's not very noticeable at all. The magazine is a um, single stack, nine millimeter magazine, obviously with a six round capacity, plus one in the chamber. This is a fantastic firearm for concealed carry, especially if you don't mind shooting exclusively 124 grain ammunition. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like it, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you found it helpful or think a friend would find it helpful, share it with them on social media. You can always find Urban Carry Holsters on social media. Just search Urban Carry Holsters. That's it for today. Until next time, keep calm and return fire.